it's just gonna be that port 80. And again, we have here our application that is now running within our Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> And thank you for joining me for another day of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days and me sharing it with you here on my channel as well as on my public Notion page, link below. So if you prefer written notes and written examples, have a look at those. Anyway, <laughs> now the previous videos, I focused at Helm. What is Helm? Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. It allows you to create Helm templates and insert values into those Helm templates. And those are then comprised into a Helm chart. And that Helm chart can be used to create Kubernetes manifests that are then deployed to your Kubernetes cluster. Now that obviously sounds like a lot. It sounds really complex, but I promise you it's not. If you're completely new to Helm, I suggest you to check out one of my previous videos, the first one focus at a general overview on how you can get started up and running with Helm real quick. And the second one took a deep dive into different Helm commands and how you can use them to, for example, analyze the version history of your Helm charts and other details of your Helm charts and so on. <laughs> now today, specifically, we want to take a look at how you can create a Helm chart for your example application from zero and to deploying it to your cluster and running the application. Let's get started. I hope you can see this all right. Um, I'm right now here in a um, directory which is called Helm. The directory is completely empty right now. As well, I, I've set up a shortcut for kubectl, so I just have to type k now. <laughs> like a boss. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, yeah, you have to insert the meme. Anyway, so. So if I say K okay, get notes, it will display my notes. And right now I'm on my um, Kubernetes Docker, Kubernetes class on my Docker, Docker desktop. And so I'm here, I have everything set up as I need it. Now, this is the example application that I want to run. As you can see here, I have already a Docker file and I have my home charts here. Now we want to set those up though. So we're just gonna go ahead and go to the basic React template project. You can also use that if you want, just fork it from below. I'm happy with people forking my code. That's what it's for. Um, maybe you even want to enhance it. I would be very happy about that. So code, we want that. Now we're gonna go back and we say git clone and we just put that in. Now it's cloning the application. Let's cd into that so let's go ahead and say git check out what was it called it was called uh, a react template project okay so check out react react template project okay so let's open that up okay so as you can see here, I have that React template project now. Um, I hope you can see it all right. And as you can see here, I don't have a Docker file yet. So let's first edit the Docker file. Now I'm gonna actually take the Docker file that I have here in the main branch. It also has a bunch of comments. So I'm not gonna explain right now how that is set up, but you can just have a look at the comments. And if you have any questions about the Docker file, <laughs> any suggestions maybe, comment us below. Anyway, so we're gonna add that. Now here, we're gonna just add a Docker file. Fuel, Docker fuel, no, Docker file. And paste it in. That's all we do. And now I want to go ahead and test that out, make sure everything is working. So let's get a new terminal. Hi, this is a long, long message. Anyway, um, so, so Docker, Build, built, built, and then we just rename it here. I'm lazy, I know. Um, React Helm um, example. I like the script of names because then I know later on what I used that for. So we're just gonna build it. You can drink some coffee while that is finishing. Okay, now we can go ahead and say docker run. Then we want to do port forwarding and we want to say port 8080 as opposed to refer to port 80. And 
what was the app called? I probably have it below, but here I want to run this one. So this image, so we're going to go ahead and say, okay, that should work. Let's open up port localhost 8080. Here, as you can see, this is, <laughs> this is an example application that lets you filter different posts from Hacker News. So I could, I don't know, I don't think anything is here that's related to me. Anyway, let's not look at that. <laughs> so I have here, for example, posts that are related to Helm. Um, I can look for Kubernetes. It's a really handy application. So for example, earlier I looked for this person because he just his YouTube channel. Anyway, <laughs> that is a different Twitter story. So let's go ahead. Now that we have that, we can stop it. And I mean, Docker PS, is it still running? No, I think I stopped. Anyway, so let's clear that up. And now what I want to do, so I want to create a Helm chart, right? And in one of the previous videos, we saw that um, I can use a Helm create command. And I like to put everything in a charts directory. So now I just created a charts directory. That directory is going to be empty for now. So if I go into charts, um, there's nothing inside, as you can see. And now I want to say Helm create a Helm example. And I'm just going to create that chart. Now, once I do that, I can see here, here's a chart called Helm example that has been created. Now we have here our chart um, file that is basically it provides, well, a few basic things. So the API version that is used and that version two refers to Helm version three, which is quite different from Helm version two. Then we have the, num the name of the chart. We have the description of the chart. Um, it's of type application. We have the version of the chart and then we have here my app version, which is interesting. Anyway, so whenever I change my app, the app version should change. Whenever I change, update the chart, the chart version should change. Um, we explored it further in the previous video. Now I have here a Helm ignore file that is pretty similar to most of your ignore files. And I have a values.yaml file. Now the values.yaml file is really important because here I reference my image. Now I want to use the image that I actually have um, just created. So I want to go ahead and push that image Docker push to my Docker hub. So it's accessible because Helm ultimately as like a default it will pull the container image from my Docker hub. So Helm needs access to your Docker hub. You can obviously specify another container registry. You should you can specify DigitalOcean, you can specify GitHub, you can specify any other container registry. You just will have to provide the registry URL, I think uh, it was. So uh, you can use another container registry as well. I'm just using as default Helm. So we can say Docker push and then it's pushing to my, con well, Docker hub here, Docker. Um, cool. Now, this image that has, or like this chart, the image that's used within the chart and the chart that has just been created, it's for a stateless application. Meaning that this chart, it doesn't right now, like it doesn't spin up a database. It doesn't use any persistent form of storage. It's just an application that is basically up and running once you deploy the chart. So in this case, it's using Nginx, but I want to be using my um, repository and the image within my repository. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this part and and place it here. This is the repository that I want to be using and the image within. Um, then the poll policy is if not present. So if it doesn't have the, contain the container image yet, it's going to pull it off. Um, now, what else do we want? In this case, um, it's by default cluster IP, but in this case, I want to use a load balancer. I think that's how you write it. And my application is exposing port 80, as you can also see in the container image here in the 
on the docker file it's exposing port 80 now this is obviously not the best practice you shouldn't use port 80 usually uh in this case i am so just for demonstration purposes anyway so Port 80, so this is what this port refers to, okay? And these values that I specify in the values YAML file are gonna be reused across my application. So, uh, across the Helm chart, not my application. So if I go into the templates, and the templates, as you can see here, we have here an ingress that I'm not using in this case, um, which I could, like I could deploy an ingress on my cluster if I would want to. I have here my deployment YAML, I have uh, my service YAML and so on. and these are basically going to be populated with the values that I specified in my values YAML file. So something interesting that this Helm chart templates are based on Go templates. So it has a lot of the logic that you can use in Go templates. It has an if like else logic that you can that is used. So basically if statements you can use uh, to YAML is uh, yeah, converting the text to YAML, you can also do it to JSON. There are several different ways that you can build up your chart and basically make it more complex, make it more, well, not necessarily more complex, make it more comprehensive. I don't want to call it complex, but obviously once you start making, deploying more complex applications, your chart might also get more complex. Um, now, once we have that, I want to show you something specifically to better understand this. Now here we have our image. Now it specifies in the value simplify, we want to, within the image, we want to get the repository and then we want to get the tag, okay? So next we want to have um, if, well, if the tag is defined with an image, then we're going to use the tag. If it's not, like this is an or statement basically, then we're going to use in a chart the app version itself. Now we're going to go ahead and use the image tag. So we're going to specify a tag here in the value demo file. Right now there's no tag specified. However, I want to use the tag from here, the one point zero point zero. That's what I'm going to want to use. Now I'm going to save that. And this should deploy my application pro properly, probably. <laughs> um, so once I've changed that, it should be working if I deploy the file. Now let's go ahead and do a Helm dry run. Nice. I want to make sure you can see that. And maybe move it a bit, oop, a bit to the side so you can actually see this. So. nicer okay here now we're gonna go ahead and say helm install and then dry run and then the chart name helm test we're gonna call it how did we call it before we called it helm example let's do stick with helm example then helm example and then uh we want to install the chart that's basically within charts. And then we say the Helm example chart. Now I want to do a dry run to test if that would actually deploy. Now that would, it's dry run command is basically testing. Would this chart work? Like would it, does it, does it comply with the Kubernetes API? And uh, would it deploy my Kubernetes manifests? Now here I can see my Kubernetes manifest displayed. So I can, for example, see my service and what it would display. Uh, let's go over to our deployment. Where's the deployment resource? Uh, deployment resource. Now we can have a look here. Let's have a look at the image to see if it's, yeah. So here, as you can see, we specified, we changed the image tag, right? We provided the 1.0.0. And this is basically the image it's supposed to use now to deploy uh, my resources, to deploy my Helm resources. Now I can go ahead and install that chart. Let's do that. So install, awesome. Now this is installed. Now I want to go ahead and say kubectl get notes. Now you want to write, oh, it doesn't know it in this case. Okay, so let's write kubectl in this case. kubectl get notes and kubectl get pods. And as you can see here, I have my Helm chart Helm example running right now. Now I want to access it. Once our application 
is up and running and we can see here uh, we have our service which is of type load balance in this case we have our pod that is running we don't have like we didn't specify any replicas so we only have one replica in our replica set um, which is defined here as you can see we have one desired one current and one is ready now we can follow the output of the helm command to get our port so i've already done that it will display basically so what it basically do you put in this and then you put in the echo command and then it just tells you in this case it's running on localhost so you can go ahead and open up localhost in my case and it's just going to be that port 80 and again we have here our application that is now running within our Kubernetes cluster. So this is not anymore running on Docker, like in a Docker container. This is running in our Kubernetes cluster now, our application. So we could, for example, go ahead and deploy that on a, uh, no, this is my my local cluster. I could also go ahead and deploy it on a remote cluster and yeah, deploy my application. So my application's up and running, right? Um, now I'm going to look at one of the next videos on stateful applications. So we applications that actually connect to a database and similar um, to make it more complex and more realistic to deploy the Helm chart itself. Uh, I just want to show you that how easy it is to basically set up uh, Kubernetes resources, Kubernetes manifest through Helm directly. There's not much that you have to change. You could also go ahead and let's go over to our value sample file. You can enable ingress and then it will go ahead and basically yeah, use your ingress resources and install your ingress resources and uh, get that up and running. Now, once you have everything, you can go ahead and say, like once everything is up, you can say Helm and then list. And you see here your Helm deployment. So in this case, this is our um, Helm example chart. So revision one and so on. Sample. I want to have that as like, um, so that is nicer. So I can now get actually has several releases. So you can see like, okay, there are some changes that happened to the application and then a rollback happened. For example, if your deployment was not successful or so on. So just recap, it's super easy with the Helm create command to create a Helm chart, then modify some values, specifically the image tag, files, repository, and so on to use the container image that you created. It's in your, for example, in your Docker hub or in another container registry, and then just deploy your application and have it up and running in minutes. Now, this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Also, if you have any comments, suggestions, any feedback, anything you want to see in the next um, 78 days, then please comment those below. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you made it this far, it must be that you're serious about learning DevOps and specifically Kubernetes, and you might want to subscribe to my weekly DevOps newsletter, where I share free online learning resources right here in box on a weekly basis every Sunday. Subscribe. <laughs> below. I would love to hear from you. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.